Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I will show you how to calculate the density of state and band structure of silicon crystal. So there are four steps. The first one is always to do a relaxation calculation to relax the cell of the silicon crystal. And then the second step is to do a single point self-consistency calculation for the total energy and to calculate the wave function. And then we put the uh, charge distribution into the density of state calculation and also the band structure calculation. So let's get started. The first one is the relaxation calculation. And uh, the in-car file is similar as last time. I start equals zero and I charge equals two means that we do a new calculation. We don't start from the previous wave car and charge car. And uh, for the electronic optimization flex, EN card, we use 250. For this, like I said last time, you can find the information in port car and it's this value EM max here, uh, you should set it to be 1 to 1.3 times EM max. So in this case, we just set it to be 1 times EM max. And I smear equals 0, sigma equals 1, means that it is Gaussian smearing with the broadening to be 0 0.1. This is the usual setting. Because we relax the structure, we need to set I brain equals 2, so that we use the CG algorithm to converge. If you want to use some other algorithms, you can change it here, according to the VASP wiki. And then we need to change ISIF to 3. Last time for the calculation of hydrogen molecule, we used the ISIF equals 2. There, we only relax the atoms. Now we not only want to relax the atoms, but also the cell. So we set ISF equals 3. And then NSW means that there are 100 ionic steps maximum. And E diff G is the force convergence criteria. And for the K points, because now we calculate the crystal, we cannot do a gamma point calculation, but we need to increase the K point density to be something larger. And here I choose 11 by 11 by 11 points. And 0, 0, 0 means that we don't shift it. And um, this K point centers at the gamma point in the brilliant zone. For the postcard, because the silicon crystal is basically two FCC lattice shifted, so we first set a FCC cell, and then we add, this is the first atom at 0, 0, 0, and then another atom at 0 0.25, 0 0.25, 0 0.25. And you can verify that this is actually the silicon structure, that is the diamond structure. And two means that there are two silicon atoms in a unit cell. Okay. And the port car is the usual port car of PBE type of silicon. Yeah. Okay. And then let's go to the folder and then start VASP, VASP STD. Now it's finished. You see there are a lot of output files. And what we have to do is that we copy the count card, which is the relaxed structure. Let's see it here. It changes the cell dimension a little bit. So this is the relaxed structure. We just copy the count card to the second folder, and then we rename it to be postcar. Okay. And then we do this for the third step and also for the fourth step. So basically we use the relaxed structure for later calculations. And then we go to the second step. This is the single point calculation. And the only difference would be that we change the in-car so that there is no ionic relaxation and SW equals zero and I brain equals minus one. There's no ionic movement, yeah? And then we also increase the precision here. We lower EDIFF, this is the um, electronic convergence threshold. The lower this is, the more precise the result can be. Yes, and then we go to the second folder and run VASP again. This should be fairly quick. Now it's finished. And you see that uh, in output files, there is this charge car and wave car. So wave car encodes the wave function and charge car encodes the charge density. We need the charge car to do uh, the next steps. So we copy the charge car and then put it into the DOS and also the band calculation. Yeah. 
Okay, and then we go to the third step. And for the DOS calculation, there are basically two changes. First thing is that we change the in car, of course. And this time we do not start from scratch, but we start with I start equals one and I charge equals 11, which means that we read the charge density from the charge car. And charge car is the file that we copied from the last step. The second thing is that we change the I smear to minus five. So this is the tetrahedron method for the smearing. And this is especially suitable for the calculation of density of state. And you can find the information in VASP wiki. And then we have some control parameters for the density of state calculation. We set L orbit to be 11. And basically this outputs the density of state as well as the partial density of state. Uh, some people may be confused because you can have L orbit equals 10 and also L orbit equals 11. For L orbit equals 10, it is the partial density of state projected onto L, which is the orbital angular momentum. If you set L orbit equals 11, then it projects not only onto L, but also onto M. And M is the magnetic quantum number. Usually we use that. And then NE DOS means that how many points we use to calculate DOS. And usually it's like 1000 to 3000. Optionally, you can also enter the energy range of the DOS. This is the minimum energy, maximum energy, and also the number of bands. But usually this can be neglected and you can, and the program will just take the default values. If you do want to um, get this, you need to go to the last step in the self-consistency calculation and check in the eigenval file. And then here you will see that there are eight bands, 53 K points, and those are the eight bands for the first K point, eight bands for the second K point with different energy. And then you can scroll down. So the energy ranges from minus six to eight electron volt. And you scroll down and get a feeling it's like more or less from minus six to let's say 13, yeah? So here, if you wanted to put there, you can write minus, let's say minus eight to 15. And then unbands is eight, yeah? But usually you don't need to put that. Like here, I already comment that out by this. So it should be fine, it should be automatic. Okay. The second change for the density of state calculation is the K points. We, add, we have a much denser K point grid to get a much better density of state estimation, yeah? So we increase the k-point density from 11, 11, 11 to 21 by 21 by 21. And then we run the VASP calculation. Now we can already check the density of state by using P4VASP. And here of state and you see that this is actually the density of state of silicon. Note that in P4 VASP zero is the Fermi energy so they shift everything according to the Fermi energy. So this is actually the gap of silicon and you see that and it is smaller than experiment and this is known for DFT calculations. Yeah. Because we have set L orbit equals 11 in the in car I can show you the projected density of state of silicon. And we go to electronics, local DOS and band structure control. And then we input SI here to plot the density of state on silicon. And we plot both spin up and spin down. And then we deselect everything and select P orbital. We add a new line here. And this is the projection on the P orbital. Then we deselect all and select S orbital. Then we add a new line here, and then this is the projection on the S orbital. You may notice that the projected density of state does not add up to the total density of state. And this is because we project the density of state onto atomic orbitals, and there could be some space between the atoms that is not taken into account. So this is usual that the sum of the projected density of state is smaller than the total density of state. And then we go to the band structure calculation, We first take a look at the in car. 
So this time we set I start equals zero and I charge equals 11 so that the charge is read from the charge car, but the wave function is not. And we set I orbit equals 11 so that we get partial density of state projected onto different L and M orbitals. And then the second difference would be the K points. We, now we cannot use a uniform grid of K points, but we have to specify the K point path. So here it means that we let the program to automatically complete the points in the line. And 10 means that there are 10 points in a line. So there are 10 points between this line and this line. There are 10 points between this line and this line. There are 10 points between this line and this line. And there are 10 points between this line and this line. So this is a line from L point to gamma point, from gamma point to X from x to u or k, and then from k to gamma again. And this high symmetry path is the usual path that is, that is chosen for silicon or some crystal that has similar symmetry. And if you want to apply the band structure calculation for your crystal, maybe you can search in the literature or online what is the conventional k path for that. OK, so now we can start the VASP calculation. Now it's finished. We can visualize that using P4 VASP. And we can go, go to tensor states. And uh, notice that uh, if you go to tensor state, actually it is not smooth. It has a lot of spikes. And the reason is that we don't have enough K points. But still, you can see there is a gap here near zero. Yeah? And then we go to show and bands. So this is the band structure of silicon. And it's really nice. You can com compare it with literature or something you find on the internet, and it's completely the same. And near zero energy, which is the Fermi energy, there is a band gap, and it is indirect band gap. Since we have set our orbit equals 11 in the in-car, I can actually show you the band structure projected onto different atomic orbitals. So what we can do is to go to electronic and local DOS and band control, and we have to input our name of the atom here that is silicon and then because this is not a spin polarized calculation we can select both if you have a spin polarized calculation actually you can use this up and down to separate the different bands and then um, we deselect all and we choose the p orbital only let's set the symbol size to be three and add new line and you see that the big circles means that the line here has a large projection onto the p orbital, also here. But those places with very small circles means that the projection onto the p orbital is very small. So we can say here it is mainly of p orbital type, but here there is no p orbital contribution. Then we can actually also plot the s orbital. We choose it here, and then let's choose a different symbol size, 2. And, and a new line here. yeah. And the green symbols are actually the S orbitals. And you see that here, they are mostly of S orbital and then here also. yeah. So with this utility, you can actually um, distinguish what is the contribution of band structure at different points, which is very useful. So to summarize, the band structure calculation is actually very similar to the density of state calculation, except that the, for the density of state calculation, we select a K point that is uniform in the brilliant zone so that we can sample the brilliant zone evenly. But for the calculation of the band structure, of course, we want to sample the K points on a specific high symmetry path. And this is the only difference. All of them are non-self-consistency calculation. OK. So um, in this video, I have shown you how to calculate the density of state of silicon and also the band structure of silicon. If you learn something from my video, I appreciate your like or subscribe to my channel. And I hope to see you next time.